Hey YouTube, welcome to episode one of the Binomial Expansion. Today, we're going to look at Pascal's triangle, and then in future episodes, we're going to look at how Pascal's triangle connects with factorial notation and then the full binomial expansion. So getting right into it, we need to discover what Pascal's triangle is. So we're going to do some expansions, and then you're going to see a connection. So expand a plus b to the power of zero. Now, even in this case, when we take anything to the power of zero, that's one. Now I'm gonna write in a specific way. You might find it weird at the moment, but I'm gonna put one over here. It's not completely random where it is. What about a plus b to the power of one? Well, we know that's just a plus b. You might be wondering why am I putting it here? You'll see in a sec. Now without doing the full expansion, a plus b uh, squared, so instead of writing two brackets out, we're gonna get a squared plus two ab plus b squared cubed now again i'm not going to write three brackets but it would look like this it would go a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a b squared plus b cubed and then to the power four it would look like a to the power four plus four a cubed b plus six a squared b squared and then plus 4ab cubed, and then finally, we're going to have b to the power of 4 at the end. Now, I haven't got this memorized. What I do know is Pascal's triangle, and once you know the first couple of lines, you can write the whole thing. So, I haven't memorized any of these apart from just knowing the first three, basically. So, what is Pascal's triangle? You're actually looking at it without the a's and b's. So, we have 1, and the number 1 here. And we look at the coefficients. So we have 1, 1. We have 1 here, 1 here. So what we're establishing is that all the, the first numbers and n numbers all have a coefficient of 1. Yeah, you can see that here, 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 and here. What's interesting is the middle numbers. So here we have the number 2. The number 2 is 1 plus 1. Here we have the number 3, which is 1 plus 2. The number 3, 2 plus 1. Here we have the number 4, which is 1 plus 3. The number 6, 3 plus 3. And then again, we have the number 4, 3 plus 1. So you might also be seeing symmetry. So Pascal's triangle is symmetrical. And to find the next line, you're just adding the two numbers directly above. So what would Pascal's triangle look like if you were going to do it fresh? is it would look something like this. It goes 1, 1, 1, then 1, add the two numbers, 2, 1. Then we have 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. If we were to do another line, so this would be if you're expanding a bracket to the power of 5, the coefficients would be 1, 1 plus 4, 5, 4 plus 6, 10, another 10, another 5, and 1. So. By knowing Pascal's triangle, you can do any expansion. Obviously, you might be wondering, okay, well, if we had power 20, then we would need the binomial expansion. We would need to know factorial notation, which we'll do next lesson. Um, I'm going to keep it simple for now. Hey, guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So using Pascal's triangle, expand each of the following, simplifying the coefficient in each term. So for the first one, we have a power five. So the first thing you want to do is write down what the coefficients would be. Now I actually wrote this in the previous slide. So we have one, five, 10, 10, five, and one. Now observe what happens in the previous so like when you do power 4, can you see it goes a to the power 4, a cubed, a squared, a, and then it disappears. So the powers of the first term, for example, go down. And then you can see that the powers of b go up. So it goes b, b squared, b cubed, and then b to the power 4. So as one term's powers go down, the other ones go up. And what you might notice as well is that when you have the a's and b's times together, can you see their powers add to 4? So we have 3 plus 1, that's just 4, 4, 3 plus 1. So that's something to, to note as well. There's loads of patterns with these. So we have 
x to the power of 5, and then it's going to go down. So x to the power of 4, x cubed, x squared, x, and then x to the power of 0, we don't need to write that. Then what I do is I just go the other way. So when we do power 5 of the second term, we have to include the 2. So it's 2y to the power of 5. 2y to the power of 5, 2y to the power of 4, and then no 2y. All pluses in between. If one of the terms was negative, then you would have to put that in the bracket. Yeah. So now we simplify. So we have x to the power of 5 plus, now here we have 2 times 5, so 10x to the power of 4y plus, be careful here, you have to do 2 squared first. So 2 squared is 4 times 10, 40, x cubed y squared plus 2 cubed is 8 times 10, 80, x squared y cubed. 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 16 times 5 is 80, xy to the power of 4. Then finally we have 2 to the power of 5, which is 32, y to the power of 5. And again, look at all the powers for all the terms. So you have, for example, this term here, you have 4 plus 1, so it's power 5. In this term, 3 plus 2, power 5. So you know, generally, you've done it right. Part B, we're doing it to the power of 3, these two terms. So Pascal's third line goes 1, 3, 3, 1. Then we have x cubed, x squared, x, and then no x, but going the other way, We'll have 1 over x cubed, 1 over x squared, 1 over x, and then nothing. Plus is in between, and we simplify. So x cubed plus. Now here, the x is going to cancel the squared to just leave 3x plus. Now here, maybe you want to write it out. You could say 3x. Now 1 over x squared, you square the top and the bottom. That'll be 1 over x squared. So the x squared will go in the denominator plus 1 over x cubed for the final term. So the x's cancel here. So our final answer is x cubed plus 3x plus 3 over x plus 1 over x cubed. And that's our solution. Okay, next question. The coefficient of x squared in this expansion in ascending powers of x is 24. So ascending powers of x means that the powers of x need to go up. So you wouldn't start with x to the power of 4, you'd start with the, numer the numerical value independent of x, then we're going to go up. a is a constant, a is negative, find the value of a. So it's power 4. So if we were to do Pascal's triangle really quickly, remember the number 1 on the top means power 0, so we don't even really look at that. 1, 1, that's the first line. 1, 2, 1, second, third, and the fourth. So we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we have 1 to the power of 4, then it's going to go down in power. Now I'm being very explicit with this, but if you don't want to write the powers of 1, you don't have to. And then none, then you're going to have ax to the power of 4, ax cubed, add them all up. Now you can simplify, or you can be tactical and say, look, I'm only interested in the, the coefficient of x squared. So if you were to look at the coefficient of x squared, this really is the only one I need to simplify. So it's 6, so if I focus on the x squared, it goes 6 times 1 times a squared, x squared. So when you square ax, it becomes a squared, x squared. But you don't need to write x squared because we're only talking about the coefficient of x squared. So this is the coefficient, they're saying that equals 24 in the question, divide by 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Now, since a is less than 0, as they stated in the question, a is minus 2. And that is our solution. Finally, then part b, find the value of the coefficient of x cubed. So when you read the coefficient of x cubed, over here you have 4 times 1 times a cubed x cubed. But remember, we don't need to write the x cubed. So we're doing 4 times 1 times minus 2 cubed, minus 2 cubed is minus 8, so that makes minus 32, and that's our solution. So guys, this is just lesson 1 of the binomial expansion. You're seeing how we can use Pascal's triangle, particularly for low powers, so integers or natural numbers, quite small. I would say maximum 5. Um, but we're going to see how this links to factorial notation, which will then make a connection to 
if the powers were really high, what would we, how would we compute it? Because we don't, definitely don't want to do 20 lines of Pascal's triangle to expand power 20. So stay tuned for that. If you learned anything, please hit that like button. And if you want more maths content, then make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Yeah.